Today we're going to take a look at one of these rather terrible, cheap and nasty soldering irons. But we've all used them before. They're, they, they do the job. And, um, you know, at the moment it's all I have when I'm on holiday here in Portugal. So um, uh, I'm going to have to make do with it. But the problem I have with it is that um, it's okay. It's good for soldering quite heavy duty stuff. Um, but uh, if it's just sitting idle, it gets really, really hot. And um, if I leave it on all the time and I try to solder, it, the solder just evaporates off the tip. There's no temperature control whatsoever. And um, it just wears the tip away because um, the flux and the heat, just the, the tip just gets obliterated. And I really need some way to, to make it not so hot so that, so that it's as a high and low setting perhaps. And not proper temperature control, just a way to, to um, dumb it down a bit. So I was thinking to add a simple high-low switch to this and I'll show you my little circuit I have in mind. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you guys could probably do the same because um, a lot of you probably have one of these uh, cheap soldering irons and they're okay, you know, you can use them. They do, they do the job. Um, this particular one doesn't have, even have an earth, which um, is not ideal sometimes for electronics because um, it sort of couples capacitively to the metal bit here and it's also not terribly safe but you know it works that's what you get um, in Europe these two pin plugs that aren't earth sometimes but uh, yeah let's uh, let's see what can be done how we can make a high and low power setting so as you can see here it's actually incredibly simple to make a high low power setting for your soldering iron to stop the um, soldering iron from getting too hot when it's just sitting idle and all you really need is a diode with a switch to bridge the diode out. And at the moment it's on its full power setting, its higher setting, and um, it's simply just passing the full uh, 230 volts AC to the heating element and it's in maximum power. Um, but when the switch is opened, what now happens is um, the diode passes only the positive half cycles of the AC across to the heating element. So the effect of this is that you get half wave DC to your soldering iron and it's also half the power because only half the cycles make it through. And um, now it's just as simple as uh, opening and closing the switch to bypass the diode. And uh, that gives you your high and low setting. Simple really. So that's what we'll do. So what I was thinking for this uh, cheapy soldering iron to use one of those um, inline switches you use on a, a table lamp and then um, simply mount the diode inside if there's enough room. Uh, this particular type of switch you need to crimp the wires on so I've stripped uh, the outer insulation away um, ready so we could just um, uh, trim the live wire, cut the live wire in half and I think the diode can fit neatly underneath the switch we just have to sort of uh, attach it onto the leads I think it's going to work. It should fit in there nicely. So the neutral passes next to next to the diode there. It's kind of made to carry a wire underneath the switch. So uh, we'll just uh, chop that uh, live wire in half. Now in hindsight, I should have really bought uh, one of these inline switches that has uh, screw terminals instead of uh, crimp connections. But this little switch is quite compact and um, it only breaks the live. So it makes for like a, a very uh, small inline compact switch. So I think I'll use this one. So I'll just uh, strip the insulation back on the live and uh, measure it all up to see if it fits nicely. Now because uh, on the power plug for the soldering iron the polarity can be reversed. If this switch was being used as a on off switch uh, I would prefer to use a double pole switch that broke, breaks both the live and the neutral. But uh, for this purpose, it's simply a high-low switch, so it doesn't really matter if polarity gets reversed on the plug. But ideally, it's just the live you want to do this on, but it doesn't really matter too much. So we'll just trim back the leads on that diode, so everything fits nicely. So even though this switch is uh, nice and light and compact on the soldering iron's flex, which is very good when you're using the soldering iron, in hindsight, it would have been nicer if I used a slightly larger inline switch, one with the screw terminals. 
and there would have been space for a uh, um, indicator um, neon or LED or something like that so I can actually see what position it's in it's illuminated for high or low position or both that would have been nice but not super necessary um, I don't think there'll be enough space inside this switch to accommodate for a, a little indicator light but um, this will be really handy for me actually now because um, I think even on the low setting I'll be able to do a uh, normal sort of uh, PCB soldering and if I'm soldering thicker wires I just flick it over to the high setting it'll be really handy at the very least it's going to stop the soldering iron tip um, eroding away even further than it already is I might be able to find a replacement for it but it'll give it some extra longevity which is always a good thing I'm trying to make sure that these crimps are good and solidly crimped down onto the um, live wire um, and the diode. Now I think these are designed to just crimp and leave them but I think um, because I've got a diode in there inside the crimp with, with the wire um, I think I, I need to solder it as well. I briefly plugged the soldering iron back in uh, and got it up to temperature then unplugged it and while it was still hot I soldered up the wires but obviously they were dead now because I unplugged the soldering iron you really don't want to solder uh, the wires live but uh, I think it's uh, good to put back together now and uh, hopefully everything should fit inside the case nicely so the diode and the neutral wire both sit underneath the switch so I'm just gonna um, tweak the wires a bit with a screwdriver make sure that uh, nothing presses or squeezes hard against each other and everything sits nice and um, comfy inside the switch now i think this type of switch um, it doesn't screw or clip together it's got these little uh, pins that sort of friction fit but once they go together it doesn't easily come apart so it's kind of single use so you need to use a pair of pliers or a bit of force to squeeze the case together so there you go, I guess that's um, pretty much job done. Um, I quite enjoy these simple little hacks and uh, I hope these could be useful for you guys in the future. Um, so if you like this kind of thing, um, you're welcome to subscribe if you want to and then YouTube algorithm can recommend this and more other videos like these to you in the future. Thanks for watching, see you guys on the next one, bye. <music>